Hi, kids. Today we will learn about effort arm and load arm of a lever and how to find its mechanical advantage. So let's start. We know lever has essentially three parts: effort, load, and fulcrum. And based on the position of effort, load, and fulcrum, lever can be of three types: class one, class two, and class three. Fulcrum in the center, class one lever. Load in the center, class two lever. And effort in the center is class three lever. Now let's learn about the effort arm and load arm of the lever. Tootway has thousands of animated videos on math, English, and science to clear the core basics of these subjects. The arm joining the effort to the fulcrum is the effort arm, or the distance between the effort and the fulcrum. Load arm, the arm joining the load and the fulcrum, or the distance between the load and the fulcrum, is known as load arm. And it's the length of the load arm and effort arm of the lever. That decides the mechanical advantage of that type of lever. Now let's see the effort arm and load arm of different types of levers. Class one lever that has fulcrum in the center here. This is the load arm of the lever. That is the distance between the load and the fulcrum. And this is effort arm of the lever. That is the distance between the effort and the fulcrum. Remember, the rule is: the longer the effort arm, the larger the mechanical advantage of the lever. Now let's learn it with examples. Here we have a class one lever. This point is effort. This is fulcrum, and this is the load. Effort arm is the distance between the effort and the fulcrum. So this much is the effort arm, and load arm is the distance between the load and the fulcrum. So this much is the load arm. So you can clearly see over here that the effort arm is much longer than the load arm, and the rule is the longer the effort arm. The larger the mechanical advantage, so this lever will give a large mechanical advantage. Now here is one more example. Here we have one more class, one lever. Effort arm is the distance between fulcrum and effort, so this much is its effort arm. Load arm is the distance between the load and the fulcrum. So this much is its load arm. So you can clearly see that the load arm is bigger than the effort arm. So according to rule, it will not give any mechanical advantage. Rather, it will be more difficult to lift the load here. So what we learned, we learned, the effort arm should be longer for getting the work done easily. Here we have a pair of scissors. Scissors too work on the principle of lever. This is its effort. This is fulcrum, and this is the load area. Here we place the load. The nearer the load, the more easily it will be cut, as the load arm would be smaller in that case. So if you want to cut a cardboard with scissors, placing it here will be difficult. But if you place it nearer to the fulcrum, the cardboard will be cut more easily, as the effort arm would be longer and load arm would be shorter. Here we have pliers. 
In case of pliers, the effort arm is much longer than the load arm. That's why pliers are very efficient to do very heavy tasks. Now let's learn about class 2 levers, where the load is in the center. Here the effort arm is the distance between the effort and the fulcrum, and the load arm distance between the load and the fulcrum. So in every case of class 2 lever, the effort arm is much longer than the load arm. So class 2 levers are mostly used for heavy weight activities. Examples of class 2 levers include a wheelbarrow, lemon squeezer, bottle opener, nutcracker. All have load in the center. And so all of them have effort arm much bigger than the load arm. Now let's learn about class 3 lever. Where effort is in the center, effort arm is the distance between the effort and the fulcrum, and load arm is the distance between the load and the fulcrum, as effort is in the center. So here, in every case, Effort arm is going to be smaller than the load arm. Therefore, larger effort is required to do a very small work. This type of lever is used to do very light jobs, like tweezers. Effort arm is much smaller than the load arm here. Here are more examples of class 3 levers. And in all the cases, effort being in the center, the effort arm is much smaller than the load arm. So kids, today we learned about the effort arm and the load arms of different types of levers. Now go ahead and take a quiz to learn more. Bye-bye!